Okay, I think let's just continue because I'm going to record it anyway. So basically, let's, let's wait for cut. Let's wait for him. I think it's just saying that. Okay, so when you, add, when you have an equation like this, nah, if you look at it, let's say our F net is two and our M, our, the mass of the object is four kilograms. Nah? We're gonna end up with an acceleration of 0 0.5 meters per second squared. So I'm just, I'm not gonna write the units here, but I, I'm just trying to give you guys the idea. So, and you guys are gonna, are probably gonna face questions like this a lot in, when, 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 when coming to Newton's law of universal gravitation and also next year in grade 12. So let's say now we're gonna double the force. We're gonna end up with four over four. And our acceleration is gonna become one meter per second squared. So if you look at it, when we're increasing the force, what's happening to the acceleration? Is it increasing or decreasing? I, you guys can answer that. Okay, so when we're increasing the force, eh, the acceleration also increased from 0 0.5 to one. And now let's say we increase the mass, it's gonna end up being something like um, two divided by eight. And this is gonna give you 0 0.25. So as you can see, when you increase the mass, when you increase the mass, the acceleration decreases. Acceleration decreases. But when you're increasing the force, acceleration increases. So when they say something is directly proportional, that means when that thing is increased, or let's say two things are directly proportional, they mean when one thing is increased, the other one is gonna increase also. So if you look at it, when the acceleration increases, the force has to increase also. But when acceleration decreases, the force has to be decreased or the mass has to be increased. So now that's the point where we get to indirectly proportional, where if something, if one increases, if the mass increases, then the acceleration decreases. That's when we say that acceleration is indirectly proportional to the force. But now, when we increase the force, acceleration also increases. That's why we say acceleration is directly proportional to the force. So whenever they're gonna ask you about, they'll usually ask you, state the mathematical relationship between these two things. If you can't write it in numbers, you just have to write either one of these two statements, whether that those two things are directly or inversely proportional. So that's basically it. So um, 
I don't think I have enough time for us to go through a question, a question paper because I think our class is going to end in five minutes. So can I hear any questions from your side? And then after then, um, I can give you the equations that you will need for Newton's second law or that you mostly need for Newton's second law. So do you guys have any, any questions for me? Yeah. Okay. So um, let me just rub these out and then I'll give you guys some useful equations that you are gonna need when calculating using, using Newton's second law. So Newton's second law is gonna be fairly, it's fairly easy in definition, but it's hard when it comes to calculations. So when we meet, um, I'm probably gonna go through like question papers and question papers. When, so I think you guys are writing the last week of March, right? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, sorry I'm in, a, two weeks time. in two weeks time. And you're just gonna yes, write sir. about like Newton's second law, um, vectors in two and vectors in two dimensions. So we are right now physics paper of March. Uh, uh, now I'm just asking that you're gonna write about Newton's second law and vectors in two dimensions, right? Uh, we have a resultant of more than two vectors, but aren't any components vectors? Yeah, but that's why I'm just I'm just saying like then if we only have these two chapters, then it's gonna be fairly simple because we'll have more time to work on Newton's second law. And as we work more on Newton's second law, you'll learn a few more things about vectors in two dimensions. And then we also, if we go to Newton's second law, find it confusing, we can also track back to vectors in two dimensions just to refresh ourselves so that I can, you guys can be in peak condition when it comes to the, test that you guys are gonna write. But anyway, let me just give you guys a few equations. Um, I don't know whether you're gonna screenshot this or you can write them down. So these are the equations that you guys are gonna need to know for Newton's second law. When, when you're gonna be asked questions about Newton's second law. So basically the first equation is F net is equal to MA. This is obviously the main equation when it comes to Newton's second law. And then this can be extrapolated to F net. Remember the net force is sort of the same as saying the resultant force. So F net is gonna be the sum. It's gonna be the sum. Uh, so this is, this is just a mathematical symbol for sum. If you want, you can write sum, sum of all forces. So that basically means force number one plus force number two plus, you know, all the way to whichever number 
you could just say all the way to whichever number of forces. It just keeps going depending on the amount of forces that you have in your particular scenario. <clears throat> and then you're gonna have the equation for friction. So when you're gonna draw the sign for friction, it's a small letter F, sort of the same shape as the one for frequency. And then here, you're gonna write S for static friction. And you can also write K. And K is for kinetic friction. So if you have static friction, you write Fs. Static friction is when the object is not moving on whichever surface it's on. And when the object is moving, you write K for kinetic friction. So you're gonna have the static friction or kinetic friction is equal to the coefficient of static friction or kinetic friction and that coefficient is going to be multiplied by the normal force now the normal force sometimes you have to calculate it. And sometimes your normal force is equal to, uh, sorry, what? why is this thing? What's this thing doing now? So your normal force is usually going to be equal to mg so sorry so your normal force is going to be equal to mg so whenever you see whenever you are required to calculate your friction you're going to use this equation and in place of the normal force you can put it you can use mg which is the same as your gravitational force so, and obviously, you know that your gravitational force, which is Fg, is equal to Mg. And yeah, I think these are the main equations that we will be using over and over again in this in this chapter and how we're gonna use them is solely gonna depend on what the given scenario is so i i'll be fine like do you guys understand do you guys have questions and after this we can we can end our session so do you guys have questions? Um, so you can hear me. No question, sir. Okay. okay. Then no, nah, it's fine. Um, so I'll see you guys on Thursday and we can just get straight into the question papers. I think this is this is like the most essential information you guys need to know about Newton's laws. And yeah, so I'll see you guys on on Thursday. Okay, enjoy, enjoy your weekend.
You too, sir. Bye. Yeah. Keep safe.